This is so good. Ew, what's up, guys? This is Xiaoxiao. I hope you enjoy the little sequence of my daily routine taking a nap in my studio and make a good cup of coffee. Today, I want to share with you a story that just happened to me recently. Um, it makes me more determined about the whole YouTube scene. The reason I started this channel is pure simple. I want to let the world see Taiwan, come visit Taiwan, and make friends with Taiwanese people. And I figured the best way is through video. And of course, the best platform is YouTube. Now two months passed, even I only uploaded four videos, but I started to think it might lead me to a greater purpose, which was written in my book. I'll explain later. Since I launched my YouTube channel, thanks to the help of Dan, I got a huge number of subs in a very short time. And many people DM me on Instagram too. There was one guy called Syrian from the Netherlands who was particularly active. He said that he has been following me on Instagram for a while. He just wanted to congrats me. Of course, I couldn't be more thankful. He said that he is literally watching my first video and excited. He loved it and subscribed to my channel and hope someday he can cycle in Taiwan with me. Days after, he messaged me again and said that he is also a YouTuber. Maybe he will come to Taiwan next month, ask me if I'm willing to do a video with him. Then every few days, he would update me on his status. Like he said that he sent a video to his favorite YouTuber in London and the, the guys in London were so excited to work with him. A few days later, he said that the, the plan with the London YouTubers has been postponed. Now he's in New York trying to get his drone fixed and now he is heading back to Amsterdam ready for his trip to Asia. Ask me if I'm available in October. Then I started to feel nervous. He is a little bit aggressive, isn't he? Do I have my first crazy fan? A dude? <laughs> that was totally different from my imagination. So my head started running wild. Oh my god, should I let him be in my studio? Would it be better if we meet somewhere else for the first time just to ensure that he's a normal person? Then it occurred to me, he said that he is also a YouTuber. Why don't I just go watch his videos to see what kind of person he is? So I went to his channel and watched a couple of his videos and I totally changed my mind. Fuck the comfort zone. So about two months ago, I started my YouTube channel Journey Thingy and I have to say I fell in love or I am in love or I love it. In order to stay true to my stupid ideas, I decided I'm going to focus on YouTube full time. Which basically only means that I'm going to be living like a bum for the unforeseeable future. But I bet it's going to be worth it. Now what are the pros and the cons of going at this full time you ask? Let's find out. Pro number one. Life is going to be one big adventure. Yeah. Pro number two. That's about it. Con number one. Now, let's say I meet the girl of my dreams and we fall madly in love. We write each other's names in the sand, we call each other silly nicknames, and we have a favorite Netflix show that we watch together. And then, it's finally time to go and meet her parents for the first time. Excited as I am, I turn up to the house in my shiniest outfit. We have laughs and eat good food, and then her parents ask me, So, what do you do for a living? And then I have to say I'm a full-time YouTuber, which basically means I'm unemployed. That's a con. <laughs> He's such a funny guy. But what these videos really caught my attention is that he always did some stupid challenges. Serious stupid ideas. So, I had this layover in Dublin airport on my way to London and with about 5 hours on the clock I thought it would be a good idea to take a bus to the infamous town of Newry in Northern Ireland because technically that would mean I can say that I have another country under my belt. It was a stupid idea. Serious stupid, stupid ideas. Now since I'm flying out tomorrow, I thought, why not pull an all-nighter? I mean, they call it the city that never sleeps. However, that can be quite a challenge in New York. You have to think about safety and comfort and about not getting arrested. Sweet dreams, everybody. Now, it actually feels quite weird to film yourself while falling asleep, but I managed to catch myself actually drifting away. Oh. Look at those handlebars. I don't even know there are so many kinds of them. Ah, 
Besides his open-minded and fearless mentality, I also found that he is actually a warm-hearted person. Now, this was all fun and games, but homelessness is actually a serious issue that needs to be talked about. There are countless of people out on the street that are actually working super hard to get back on their feet. So don't shy away from helping out or giving back however you can. I kind of have tears in my eyes a little bit right now. I just saw a guy on the street um, who had no shoes on. Um, and he had a sign like, hey, I'm homeless and it's embarrassing. And I literally, I just bought new shoes and I still have my other ones with me and they're still pretty nice. So I th thought, you know what, why not give it to this guy? So I told him like, hey, you don't have shoes? And he said, no. So I gave it to him and he was so happy. He was so genuinely happy um, that he had shoes now. And I don't know, like his reaction and his smile on his face, everything really just makes it all, all, all worth it. Um, I'm so happy I did that. So I invited him to my studio. We chatted about our stories. We shared a workflow of making videos and also what we are going to achieve in our creative career. Then I took him to buy my favorite boba tea riding my scooter. And I saw him off to his own adventure in Taiwan. And a few days later, it seems that he had such a good time in the East Coast. He told me he's coming back to Taipei and he would like to challenge himself to hitchhike all the way back to Taipei. I was thinking to myself, dude, that is super easy, okay? You call out a challenge? So I started off in Dulan on the East Coast of Taiwan. And for the first day, I had to make my way up to Yuli. Let's get to that main road and uh, see how long it will take to get to Yuli. Now, it could have just been luck, but I got picked up within a couple of minutes of starting. Hello. So these guys just took a huge stretch out of their way to bring me further to my goal, meaning I'm already halfway there. And then... Oh, that's like one minute, literally one minute. And yes, they also went out of their way again to drop me exactly where I needed to be. Bye bye. <laughs> Man, these people, these people, I, I'm speechless. And then right away, I got picked up again. Again, they went way further than they needed to go and even made sure I could use the toilet there. If I'm lucky, I'm just gonna get a one single ride all the way to Taipei. And that's exactly what happened. Told you. In the meantime, one major publishing group, Commonwealth Magazine, wants to cover my story. They plan to send one photographer to take photos of me riding uphill. I figured it would be fun if Zirian could join us. So I invited him and he said yes. It was a beautiful day. We had such a good time. Lastly, I asked him a question. What is his overall experience in Taiwan? Um, I don't want to leave. <laughs> I don't want to leave. So come back. Come back I, will, I, I will definitely come back. This is one of those places where I'm, I just want to keep on coming back, I think. Yeah. Like I told you before, this might just be my favorite country in the world. <laughs> oh, my yeah. new favorite place. I'm really amazed with, like my mind is blown with how amazing this country is. The, how beautiful it is and how amazing the people is. So everything together. Yeah, it makes it just, and the good very food. unique. Yeah, of <laughs> and course, the food. you're a foodie. It kind of stole my heart a little bit. <laughs> I think you just have to come here because it's very hard to describe. Experience. Until you come here and you feel it and you see it, like it, it just has to, you just have to experience it. I see I'm getting all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And the day when we said goodbye to each other, it got a little bit emotional because 
Even we only hang out for a very short period of time, we feel that we already good friends and have known each other for a long time. I truly believe that we will meet again and do some more collaborations. And when we're thinking about what brought us together, the answer is the videos we uploaded on YouTube. It reminds me of the question I asked Dan Mace when I drove him to the airport. Why did he choose me as one of his seater? So it was an easy, easy choice because uh, the video that you made really just showcased the kind of person that you were, which is like I said to you yesterday, um, really just aligns itself with the with the kinds of people that I want to create these videos with, you know, it's a, a planting a seed is about growing deeper roots, yeah. and um, I don't want to just uh, go to a place because it's beautiful and make a beautiful video yeah. and move on. I want yeah, to yeah. plant seeds yeah. together with people, create deeper roots, and hopefully branch into uh, something that that has a longer lasting uh, conversation. Yeah, that's it. Just like he said, his videos always can find him some like-minded individuals. I believe Syrian and I are one of them. We all share the same dream. We hope that all humankind will be more connected in the future. So, if you have your own dream or vision, if you desire to find or even create your own tribe to achieve that. Now it's better than ever. All you need to do is to take out your mobile phone, talk to it, and upload it on the internet, and keep doing it. Simple as that. But I'm not the only one. I hope someday you join us. And the world will leave us one. I hope you join us. Nice. Found this, the bed with the yeah. the national flag. We got this one. Yeah.